So we spent three, no, four days under continuous human shelling. And shelling? That's what they do when they hold big, exploding metal balls at you from a long distance. Look, it's a lot like a low orbit strike, only they fire from the ground and it's never direct. I suppose that's the worst part of it. Shelling is bad because there's a good chance they'll miss, and they don't quit, even if you've been blown to pieces. Why? Because they don't know if they've hit you or not. Let me finish. When we hit someone with a low orbit strike, those fuckers are getting glassed 99% of the time. But with human artillery, it's probably a 10 to 15% chance they'll find their target. Primitive? Don't give me that. I mean, yeah, nothing beats a good plasma cutter or orbital strike, but I'm convinced those things are less about decimating the target and more about installing fear in them. Let me put it this way. Your transport goes down over, no, oh, I don't know, a desert, which is basically flatland, only they're hot all of the time and the ground will sink if you stand too long. Three groups of humans move to engage you. They're slinging metal at you from behind rocks, small buildings, whatever. And you're slamming plasma bolts into their chests as fast as your targeting computer will let you. Then all of a sudden, they stop. They maybe plunk one more time at your position, but they run away. Now, you've got some wounded so you can't pursue and a friendly pickup won't be here until a couple of days due to the lunar blockade, so you're basically stranded on a burning rock. It's all silent, and by the spirit it's hot. But you keep at the ready because you know they'll be back when their star sets. You maybe start to doze off a bit, scavenge around the ship for some food and liquids, when you hear a whistling sound. It starts off very faint, but grows into a painful shriek. And then you see the guy in front of you having his meal spontaneously combust, and he takes half of the ground near you with him. You're stunned for a moment until you hear the same whistle. And then it finally clicks that you need to run. It feels like you're walking on a volcano. Any surface could pop at any minute, and there's no way of telling how hard they're going to hit or where. You can only listen to them shrieking across the desert until they take out your broodmate in the blink of an eye. That's why I ran as hard as I did, only there isn't nowhere to run, you see. Deserts are big and empty. There's nothing there, apart from rocks. So I stayed under a rock for three days, watching the ground in front of me pop up and hiss and instant glass itself. I saw my guy screaming for help and running. Maybe he took a bit of metal to the leg and couldn't move. Maybe he had his whole leg blown off and he wants you to give him his passing rights. Do you want to risk getting hit out there to get this guy? Any honorable warrior ought to say yes, but after six hours of continuous bombardment and listening to this guy screaming in agony, it's more honorable to just shoot him and be done with it. So that's what I did. What's the longest you've gone without sleeping? 10, maybe 12 hours. Humans need to sleep once every 24 hours and they can subvert that through sheer willpower or chemicals. You know how it is when we don't sleep, we get a little crazy. We get anxious and agitated. We start to not act ourselves. You ever not slept for three human days straight? That's the equivalent of 72 waking hours. 72 hours of listening to huge rounds of metal slam into our downed carrier and shred off the armor we thought was impervious to their primitive arms. 72 hours of listening to screams and cries of people who couldn't get onto the rock in time. They didn't stop. I swear on the spirit, they didn't stop until they were sure we were ready to surrender. Depriving a Molrin of sleep is a good way to induce that certain mental state. I'll tell you that much. 
It felt like the whole universe was collapsing each time a round would go off near the rock. A wave of heat would wash over us all and we'd all look at each other, trapped in our own delusions, mouths open wide in fear and confusion and wonder, is this real? I watched two guys wander out there in between volleys because they thought they were back on Travlon. They both went up at the same time, and that was the last I ever saw of them. By the time the humans came back again, our landing site was utterly decimated, and we were more than willing to throw ourselves at them in surrender. So they picked us up, tied us all up, and threw us in the back of their vehicles and trucked us into town. We finally got to see human artillery weapons, and let me tell you, they are ugly. They look exactly like how they sound and what they do. Metal mechanisms that cross everywhere, heat pouring off the barrel and sand gouges deep in the armour. I still have dreams about them. All I can say is, thank the spirit they're on our side now.